I had forgotten how much I liked Torx, so I decided I would do a second playthrough with a more powerful car. So here I'm going through the menus. A lot of these historic sports cars are faster than the real ones, but, but the GT40 is actually slower. It's a combination of a Mark 1, a Mark 3, and maybe with a few tweaks added onto that. So it's not 100% authentic, but it is a lot of fun to drive in this game. So it's one of my favorites in spite of being relatively inauthentic. So here I'm setting up another practice run on Monza. And you can already tell this is a much faster car. Just monstrously fast. But actually not as fast as a real thing. I mean, not at the top end anyway. Because a real one could go over 220 miles an hour in certain trims. But this one, eh, you might be able to get it to do 170. But you have to strain to achieve that. The performance is maybe closer to a Lamborghini Countach, actually. Which, you know, in the 60s would have still been very impressive, but it's actually not as impressive as the real thing, surprisingly enough. The handling is also really, really good, which... I don't know. I don't know if that's realistic. Most 60s cars do not hold up well to modern standards for handling at all. And, of course, Top Gear have done a lot of shows where they've demonstrated that a Vauxhall Astra can beat most 60s sports cars, actually, even if it has a diesel engine. I think the GT40 might be an exception, though, because it's so fast in real life that there's very little that can compete with it except for something comparable from today. And in a sense, there isn't anything comparable from today, because there's no street-legal sports car today that can win Le Mans, and there probably never will be. In any case, here I'm zooming through the track. All of these speeds are vastly over what the Peugeot 406 could do, even if I do end up sliding the car a few times. I mean, really, these, these numbers are not what you could deliver with any ordinary car, really. It's a shame they didn't do a proper, authentic recreation of the GT40. I don't know what their rationale was for fiddling with it, really. But... They did produce a fun game car, anyway. And it is one of the easier ones to drive in Torx, in spite of being really, really fast. Actually, in Speed Dreams, which is the slightly upgraded alternative to Torx, in theory, you can actually configure your cars, and it wouldn't surprise me if you would be able to get a higher top speed out of this car if you imported it into that game and then used the tuning features to change the differential or the transmission, but the engine you, it actually can't be tweaked. So, maybe not, I don't know. I just, I'll break, I, I take it down to 80, I go through the curve at 80 miles an hour. Miles per hour speedometer is a cool touch, because it's a British car. And then, like, just within seconds, I'm up at, like, 140 again. It, it's it's uh, very much in line with a modern sports car, actually. But again, they, if they used authentic performance data, it would be for the very earliest GT40 the Mark 1, or possibly the Mark 3, because the Mark 3 was a slightly detuned version for the street, 
actually, because they wanted a street legal version to be sold reasonably widely so that they could say it's a GT car. Porsche faced the same issue with the 917 because the 917 had to be street legal and it was even faster. It was the only car in the world that was faster than the GT40. So they had to produce a very small number of street versions. But the GT, the street legal GT40s that were sold as street cars were a little bit slower than the track ones. So more in line with what this car here is doing. The, the differences in the measurements from the Mark 1s and the Mark 4s and Mark 3s that I compared to the specs for this car's engineering file, though, that's not explained. I don't know why the measurements are wrong. Again, it might be lifted from the Mark 1 because I wasn't able to get specifications on the Mark 1. These times are actually so fast that they're faster than what I got with a modern BMW M3 and uh, Speed Dreams, which will be my next playthrough. So, see you then. Thanks for watching.